Oh, hello, hello fellow, fellow players, I was just parking my car. Welcome to the next episode of the, of the Lotus Lab. Welcome, my fellow students. Today, we're gonna speak a bit about something that I feel like might be helpful for a player of every experience, but definitely is gonna help players who are newer to Valorant or never even played uh, too many tactical FPS games in the past. Today is about why Valorant is not Overwatch! Or Overwatch is not Valorant, whatever you want to say. But the thing is, and you hear that very much often, is that people are complaining. Oh, you're playing, we need a healer, we, we need a fucking something else, we need, we need this and that. And the thing is, at a fundamental level, there's the major difference between Overwatch and Valorant. And people make the comparison like, oh, like Valorant is like a TS with Overwatch. It's really not. At a fundamental level, Overwatch is very close to a MOBA game, right? Like League of Legends or Dota. Uh, although I don't have that much experience in Dota, so maybe I'm speaking out of my ass. Uh, while Valorant is much closer to CS as a predecessor, because it's essentially the same game with an additional layer of different pieces of utility. And if someone played, for example, a Warcraft mod in the old CS in 1.5, 1.6, that's actually very similar to Valorant, when you think about it. In Overwatch, the roles are defined. And that is very important to understand. If you pick a tank in Overwatch, if you're a Reinhardt or that swine, no, the swine is not even a tank, but if you're that Reinhardt or someone else, right? You are the tank of the team and you have a very defined role that you should be playing for the team to be effective, right? And for example, in Valorant, you can be a sage, right? And you can, uh, you can be, let's say, described as a healer for the team, but the heal is not important because at a fundamental level, everyone is the same. There's a lot of equality in Valorant, I guess, you know? Everyone has the same gun. If you buy, you can buy the same gun. You have the same amount of HP. You have the same shields. You can buy the same shields. So um, what happens in Valorant is that you, as a player, define the role, while the agent that you pick is a supplement to how you play the game. That's why it's so important, in my eyes, to find an agent that is going to supplement the way you play the game and not the other way around, right? So, for example, there's a, there's a spreadsheet I'm working on for a few months ago, and I didn't finish, but I have to finish it, and it's going to make a great video with explanations how I think about agents. There's a lot of gaps here. There's not, no humble here because uh, I have to finish that yet. But it's, it's about the way that you think, Right? You can be a lurker on Cypher, you can be a lurker on Omen, you can be a lurker on Yoru, you can be a lurker as well on any other agent. Because the roles can also change during the game. Suddenly, like let's say you're playing Haven, right? And when you're on Haven, and uh, let's, let's make an example. You're on Haven, you're an, uh, someone is on Omen, we have a Phoenix, we have Rays, we have Harbor, right? The Omen should be the lurker. But when the team is making like an execute right here, right? We, the, the team is making an execute towards A side and then suddenly fall back and you are taking the space on C, then the role might actually swap and because of that, suddenly the Phoenix will be a lurker because he stays on A and then lurks towards the later stages of the round. It's very important to understand that this is a very flexible thing in this game you adjust your role to what the game is requiring from you to be effective. For example, as well, uh, there's, there's something that comes from mobile players. When I was coaching one of my viewers uh, on stream, um, that player was playing Sage. And when I was paying attention to how that player is playing the character, he was baiting essentially, but not, not maliciously, his teammates, because in his mind, he had to heal a player from his team, as, and that was his main job. Where his main job is the gun, and then secondary, 
is the heal. So he wasn't trading, he was just out with the uh, heal in the open, like, you know, without a gun, just ready to heal someone who is fighting. And by the way, if you don't know, there's a trauma debuff. Uh, that, that's something that I shared on Reddit like two years ago. You cannot heal a person for two seconds after he sh that person is taking damage. So, um, it's very... It's very important to understand that you shouldn't be feeling pressured by your teammates to play in a specific way just because you pick an agent that you like or something. You can, you know, you know I, I really don't mind if someone is a Reyna that is lurking, although I despise Reynas in general, but if he's a good lurker, then I don't mind. Because it doesn't matter like which agent that uh, that player is playing, he will just be uh, he will have just have less efficient utility for himself. If he would like to be a lurker, for example, right? Cipher is very well equipped for lurking because of the cages that he has. Um, Astra is great for lurking because of the range on the entire map. Omen is very similar to Astra and can also dodge like traps by using the TP and so on. So there's there's so much that you need to take into account when you compare those games, that Overwatch is not even close to being in the same vicinity when it comes to genre, and people are just playing out wrong when they compare Overwatch to Valorant. The only thing that those games have in common is the fact that they have spells, slash, you know, utility pieces, and characters are different from each other, but not only by on the superficial level, you know, and not on the fundamental level, uh, where that's the case in Overwatch, that's the case in League of Legends, where every agent, every champion um, has, like, different stats, different um, cooldowns, and, like, you know, like, all those nitty-gritty that defines the role more. Even though I actually consider, in League of Legends, when I was a little bit reading about it, there's, there's a lot of flexibility in the, in the champions and which lanes are being played, right? But in, in Valorant, it's all about you as a player it's about you how you play the game it's about how you adjust to the situation and uh it's about playing as a team right and that's unfortunately a case in overwatch as well <laughs> actually that oh we have we found common ground in an overwatch environment i guess this, this video is more like a rant in general but i feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding in 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 seeing like the macro design of the game where Valorant is requiring you to be like with boots on the ground, with your gun out first, and then second thing is what you need to think about the utility. While in Overwatch, I had the perspective that, of course, not every single champion there, right? Not every single uh, um, character that you have in Overwatch is the same, but with most characters, it was utility first and then the rest. And I find that really boring for, for that's why I don't enjoy Overwatch. It's like you, you have almost no agency um to some degree. Like you guys remember the pressure video? Um pressure? Yeah, the pressure video. Um that's the guy that why why I quit Viper, right? Like you're I was playing a support Viper and my utility was ignored because of the way that the players are playing, right? And in Overwatch it feels like even worse because of that, because of your support and you, your other players are just not being supported by you properly because they play differently, well, then you are just completely useless. So, um, yeah, um, I, I guess that's it. That's more like a short rant, nine minutes video. Uh, I just wanted to convey the, the message to um, the audience, specifically when you're newer to Valorant, that you should not listen to people that say that this game is close to Overwatch or like very similar to Overwatch, because it's not. And uh, if you ever want to compare this to any game this is just cs literally just cs uh, if you played 1.6 you're gonna feel right at home um that's why i love this game by the way because cs 1.6 for me was the best cs that i ever played although my memory is a little bit foggy about 1.3 1.5 uh because i didn't play it that much as 1.6 uh but i loved 1.6 i loved the movement and um Hated the shields when they were released. When the game was released, we had shields in CS 1.6, but I digress. Um, and Valorant feels like that. There's, there's, there's huge amount of design focus being put on visibility, on transparency. That's why the graphics are just so, uh, you know, 
Candy like Valorant the children game, right? Uh, super, super children uh, graphics and so on. But this is a, on purpose, so the game has no problems with visibility. That's another pet peeve that I hear, that I have with CS or Call of Duty or other games like that. I don't see shit. You know, in those games, I don't see shit. In Valorant, I don't have that problem because characters are very vivid, uh, have outlines, and well, the maps are designed in a very specific way where the colors are not similar to the characters, which is very important. And I don't think many people appreciate that. But I also, that's an off topic. TLDR, don't compare Overwatch 2 Valorant because the games are not the same. Thank you for watching. Um, this video was brought to you by Elgato. Thank you so much for sending the hardware using the microphone, Elgato DX. It's a great mic. I swapped for my Shure SM7B that costs three times uh, to the amount of this mic. Uh, and uh, next episode, I guess tomorrow, I think, uh, we'll see what we're going to talk about. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys around. Bye-bye.